Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So speaking of Walmart, over the years I've met all sorts of people. Most of the customers that are there that I bump into are normal, but every so often, as most of you know, through my tales, there's always those, well, what to say, interesting people. Just like the lady that I met on Tuesday in the deodorant aisle. Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, I needed some deodorant, and so I had to encounter this odd person who enjoyed finding the deodorants and opening them and smelling them with a, a hearty inhale. Oh. That's where it was her egg sale. And she put the deodorant back and go to the next one. Oh, that was a good one. Putting it back on there, putting it on the shelf, and grabbing another one. Oh. Thank the Lord she didn't need mine. <laughs> Due to the safety seal that my brand puts on there. But over and over she was enjoying smelling the deodorants. Ma'am, I'm not sure you should be doing something like that. <laughs> yeah, what do you know? <laughs> well, I'm not trying to start an argument with you, but people are actually going to buy those things that you're putting your nose on and in. So, maybe you shouldn't do that. Yeah? What do you know? You know nothing. Here you are, interrupting a moment of joy for my life. For my life is hard, and I can't take this anymore. As she's holding a deodorant, uh, you know, threatening me. <laughs> <laughs> These deodorants allow me to have an escape. You know nothing. And thanks be to God for the blue, vest, the blue vested people that came, mm -hmm. the employees that graciously escorted her away from that aisle. Yet as I reflect upon our deodorant sniffer, I think of our gospel from Luke 8. Jesus encounters a naked man bound in chains and shackles, separated from others and living in the tombs, which are traditionally outside of town. Oh, how cozy. Talk about a fixer-upper. Right? Shackled and bound by metal, yes, also shackled and bound by unclean spirits that tormented his soul, causing him to live in a state of continuous darkness. Then Jesus comes and sets this man free. Yet how often are we like this man who lives among the tombs, shackled for our own reasons or another? <clears throat> On Wednesday night Bible study, we use the word enslaved to describe this lifestyle. When we are so consumed with this or that, and God doesn't seem to matter, only our things that bind us, where freedom and life are just words with little or no meaning, so what do I do? Mean? It is a so-called life when other things and even people in our life mean more to us than our relationship with God. So much so that these things, these all-consuming things, have become the God we worship. It reminds me of a doctor I used to work at at the VA hospital many years ago in Palo Alto when I was a chaplain there. The doctor came into the room where the patient, with the patient where I was visiting. And he looked over the patient and gave him encouraging words. And he said, oh, you must be one of the new chaplains. Yes, I said. 
I don't mean to be blunt, I'm glad that you're here, but frankly, I don't have time for this mumbo jumbo stuff that you do. Thanks be to God I had the words when I said, well, what time, what, what do you have time for? And come to find out, this doctor was consumed and bound to his work. It imprisoned him. He wrote four magnificent books. That's from what my colleagues told me. With four broken marriages, that was his ongoing score. Little to no friends, no joy, just work. So who was his God? I can just imagine what God would do and was doing if the doctor just opened his eyes to see God's glory in his life. So what if you have to do with me, Jesus, some of the most time where when Jesus frees you in your life, you will change. Righteousness will dominate your life. Hope will triumph in your life. But it begins with us releasing everything into God's hands. Releasing everything to that magnificent cross that Jesus died on for our sake. And trusting that grace is sufficient enough for our daily existence. So looking at our gospel, this man was bound by shackles. He was bound by these tormenting legions of demons. So what if this story is about using that word bound in a different sense? In the sense, like Superman, able to leap tall buildings in a single what? Bound. In a single bound. Our gospel for us is to see and hear about freedom found in our faith. Yes, too often we are bound by this and that. Only you can name these things that shackle you. Yet by your faith, Jesus sets you free so that you can go bounding. Bounding to righteousness, verse 35, and they found this man in his right mind. However, the story doesn't end right there. Remember, we are bounding here in Christ, going out and springing forth. Verse 39, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. Freedom in Christ calls us to tell everyone about your freedom. But what do I know? Well, let me tell you. I continually am being unbound from my darkness by my Savior who loves me so desperately, by my God who finds me to be beautiful in the midst of my ugliness. He is all that I need for my daily life, for my life now and forever. <coughs> he is my joy, but what do I know? So I ask you, what do you know? Well, it's time for us to get up and tell people what Jesus has done for you. Excuses are not the answer. That only shackles you even more. Speak of this life that Jesus has given to you so others can go abounding 